Fellow greetings to you all. This is Joe Alves, aka Portuguese Joe, and this is another informative video from Pioneer Gun Works. I uh, just want to show everyone out there how to install one of our Pioneer Gun Works speed sights. Uh, just in case you have never installed one of these before, or you know, or have any misconceptions about um, the, the proper installation, one of the things that we want to say for starting off: this is our Pioneer Gun Works speed sight. As you can see, it's a very wide, rounded, polished brass bead, 16th of an inch in diameter. It's very stout, unlike some of the uh, common um, uh, front sights that come stock with your gun, most guns, I should say. And it's a very sturdy design. Thick foot, made of a solid steel. So that's what you get when you order it. The one misconception that I've heard a lot of our customers say, and just a lot of people in general, is that um, either the front sight has to be tapped into the front sight dovetail slot from one side or the other, and that is not true. Uh, there is no taper to the dovetail cut itself. You can install it from either side. It really makes no difference. The one thing you do need to do, though, is on every one of our sights, other than our carbine barrel front sight, you have to remove material from the bottom foot of the sight itself, which is this little area right here. Everything you're looking at on the table are the three things you need to install this, this uh, front sight. The front sight, common hand file, nothing special, and voila, a gun. Which, as you can see, this is a customer's gun, already has one of our custom speed sights installed. So, real simple. Sight in one hand, holding it between your thumb and forefinger from the top. File on the other hand. Commence filing. And that's, that's about it from this point on. And then sometimes what I'll do is, because it'll heat up the metal, I'll just kind of give it a little bit of a cool off time and then I'll spin it around and do it from the other side. It just kind of makes the grinding surface a little even. Makes it easier to install when you're done. Of course, I'm not pushing any pressure whatsoever on um, uh, on the file here, but you're going to obviously be pushing some pressure on there. You don't have to use a hand file like this. You can you can use um, uh, one of those four surfaced uh, filing blocks. Uh, you know, a diamond file, whatever. I mean, if you even want to get super ultra creative, you can fashion a device to put this into a milling machine if uh, if you're so inclined, but. Uh, it's kind of a back and forth process. Remove material, re, uh, try installing it into your gun, remove a little bit more material. Uh, you'll, you'll definitely know when it comes to the point where you can tap it in uh, fairly precisely without nicking up the barrel at all um, and you know w without having to remove any more material. Now if you do get to the point where you have removed too much material and it basically the front side just slides in from one side of the slot and slides right out the other. Have no fear, you do not need to order a brand new sight. What you would do in that instance is, now let's just pretend there's no speed sight there. Uh, as we all know, an empty dovetail has an internal cut here and on this side at angles. So in the event that you do take off too much material off the front sight, what you would do is take a wide headed metal punch either over the the, uh, uh, the barrel side of the inside cut of the dovetail or the other. Take that wide punch just over the top of the overhang cut on either side here or here, once again pretend this isn't here, of the dovetail and just tap it with a small peening hammer so that basically that dovetail overhang cut is now kind of bent inward what that's going to do is put a little bit of uh, pressure on the uh, on the front sight now. You should be able to tap it in with a decent amount of tension on there. Um, what I use to tap them in are actually brass punches. They're obviously they're shaped in the exact same fashion, same um, head diameter that you can get with the steel ones, but they don't leave uh, chips and dings and marks nearly as severely as the steel ones. They will slightly flatten the sides of your front side here and here 
very slightly. It is a very soft metal if you're using the brass ones, but um, uh, usually even with the little brass marks that they leave on the sides of uh, the front sights, you can just kind of wipe off with your thumb a little bit or take a little rag with a little bit of cleaning oil and you're pretty much good to go. And at that point, um, you know, just kind of eyeball it. Make sure that the tip of the brass bead is, uh, is, is fairly centered to the barrel. As you can see, we don't use any devices to measure the center. I don't measure these things. I've been doing this for years. I can pretty much do these things in my sleep. I just eyeball it. And then I line it up with the rear sight up against this, uh, a uh, target that I have on my wall in my, work, my working area and um, never had a complaint with any installation I've done on these. So there you have it. If you have any questions, feel free to email us at pioneergunworks.com or you can use our info at pioneergunworks.com or we'll shoot them at pioneergunworks.com. Shoot safe, shoot straight. We'll see you later.